It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Atlanta Falcons. And it's coming up next on EA Sports. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Minnesota Vikings and the Atlanta Falcons. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. The Florida Atlantic man, Greg Joseph, ready to get this one started. And this one is underway here on EA Sports. Taken in at the three and able to get this out to the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. And you know how scouts always talk about checking all the boxes? I think this young man does exactly that when you're looking for an NFL quarterback. Proven leader, teams went 43-6 and six while he was in college, has speed, dual threat ability, and production off the charts while he was in school, and also did a nice job of limiting turnovers. When you put it all together, there's a lot to be excited about for this young quarterback. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There was a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage. And that throw had no shot. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. A first carry for Tyler Algier. And he lost the football. And this belongs to the Vikings. Well, he's not the starter coming in, getting his first carry off the bench. That's not the way to earn more carries. You have to stay in the game, even if you're not on the field, right? Stay mentally sharp, stay ready. And above all, when you get into the game, hold on to the football. Don't let the other team have it. Under center for the Vikings, out comes the former Michigan State Spartan and longtime veteran Kirk Cousins. And one nice thing you can always say about Kirk Cousins is that he's consistent, always puts up nice numbers each and every year. If there is a downside to his game, it's been the lack of playoff success. All in all, though, a formidable starting quarterback at a time in the league where it's tough to find your franchise guy. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn.
After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On first and 10, it's Algier. And he's across the 43, extra yards to the 43. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Second and three. And he will find his man on the outside. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. Charles, that's a route that you and I have seen time and time again in our years up in this booth, and that executed well in a great throw, too. And sometimes, even if you know it's coming, the execution will trump whatever you do on the defensive side of the ball. Plus, it was a well-thrown football. A nice, healthy gain right there. So the 14 yards actually takes him from 143 to the other for first and 10. They'll drop to throw. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for a first down for the Falcons. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. They'll look to throw now on first down. His throw incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. On second, here's Algier. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. I think we'll see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Algier. Officially it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. I thought they were onto something with their play call and kind of went in reverse a little bit, threw it on first down, then ran it on second down. Not successful either way. 
What play call do they come up with here on this important third down try? A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Looking to throw. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. So on fourth down, Ritter heads to the sideline. Young Way Koo gets set for the Atlanta field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Koo knocks this one through the post. And the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. Aku just hit the field goal. Now he kicks off. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Madison up to the 20. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Another carry now for Madison. And they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And for the Falcons, five men in the secondary, now on third. To throw is Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Play fake, Cousins. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. I like that one, partner. They go back-to-back -back with excellent gains, and really it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised if they'll come right back to him again. They haven't shown the propensity to be able to stop him. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 34. They'll go Madison up the middle. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. 
So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now Cousins. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, to me, there is no question about the intent there, and I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But he'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Throwing his Cousins. This goes out wide from Madison. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. Spotted at the left, hash this from 45. Joseph's got it, and that will tie us at 3-3. So a return of serve, so to speak, here on the second drive of our game as they respond to that opening field goal with three of their own. I like that. Going a little tennis on well, me, I know huh? you. You like to mix it up I with like sports. That. They, yeah. crack, they crack a forehand back out, and they get a backhand. What was the, start, it, what was the return it, on? It was a backhand. I and like a that A really one. good backhand. With some nice top spin on the a little thing. Bit, little I bit. love it. Almost yeah. a mirror image when you really get down to it. I thought that was pretty good stuff. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw here. To the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. And they try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. This defense has passed its first two tests by forcing back-to-back -back incompletions. They know that there's probably another throw coming on third down. Let's see if they decide to force the issue by sending people on a blitz. He'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Gain of nine that time on the scramble. One yard shy of the marker, and it brings up fourth. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run, and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. On fourth down, Bradley Pinion on to punt for the Falcons. K.J. Osborne deep for Minnesota. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. 
Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. These two teams all tied after one. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Throwing Cousins. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. the play fake Cousins he's going to flip one out here to his running back and he goes out of bounds it looks like right at the 50 it'll be a gain of five and that will bring up second down now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down whatever you want to call it gain of five you're just trying to get four on first down they're ahead of the chains now Cousins now from the 50. Going to throw right side here, complete. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 33. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On play action, Cousins on the move to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Give the sack to Lorenzo Carter. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage. But right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward. And how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Cousins now. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Well, partner, guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Seventh play in this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Cousins to throw it. Open man is Osborne. He's got it. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. How about that? They weather the storm of a third and 17 to pick up the first. That's a big gainer on that play. And from experience, I can tell you, that's where defensive backs will come into the huddle and say, guys, how about some pass rush? But you're going to say it nicely because those big guys up front, they don't like being criticized very much. Quarterbacks in this league, you know they'll pick you apart if you give them time like that to find receivers downfield. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Fighting a safety valve here. That's complete. And he's going to be marked down just outside the ten. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. 
They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Second and nine. Here's Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. The nice footwork gets him just inside the 10 to the 9, but no further. So the completion gets him just a yard. And third and 8 now. They'll be in search of 8 yards here as they hope to convert the first down. They'll throw again. Cousins. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. And he will not be able to get the first as he can get this only down to the five. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Fourth down, field goal try coming. So Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph for Minnesota. The kick by Joseph is good, and they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. So we're trading first-half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. So all field goals so far, 6-3 our score as the kick is away. Taking it about the one. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. And here now come the Falcons. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at their own 23. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Open man is Kyle Pitts, his tight end. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you've got a heck of a tight end candidate. They'll look to throw here on first down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. All right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. They'll look to throw here. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. And it took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. <laughs> This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. Got a man, it's London. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to make it fourth down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. On 
on the return is Osborne. 35 yards that time on the punt. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Cousins on first down. And his throw is incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Cousins. Complete. Jefferson the target. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Throwing right, and that's complete. And they'll get him down at the 34, and he's going to be short of the first by a few yards. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up fourth down. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The Vikings send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Forty two yards on the punt just two on the return and it will be first and ten as they take over Atlanta now coming out on the field. It's been very much a slow start for them three drives and just the three points CD. Yeah if you're into the points per drive ratio. That answer is one, and that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That's brought in downfield by London. 20, 10, touchdown, Falcons! Drake London, 79 yards. And the Falcons have regained the lead. Well, Charles, kind of the future of this franchise on display right there. You had a rookie throwing it, a rookie catching it, and taking it into the end zone. Could you imagine if we were in the owner's box right now and we could look at the front office and see the grins on their faces to see the present making plays and knowing what the future will bring with these youngsters going out and making big time moments happen for this team. Koo able to connect on the extra point and that will make this a four point game. They certainly made quick work of that, ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see, just one play resulting in the touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. 
fielded just outside the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday you press it a little bit. This might be the case. Cousins now to throw on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 15 yards is the pick up there in the drive, starting very nicely. First down. But well, whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's a result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands, and oftentimes the receiver turns around, and there's the ball. Nice completion there. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Working with a second and three. Cousins. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Again, it's Cousins. Pressure brought in. Falcons get there for the sack. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The Vikings send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. Taking it at about the 16. Call that a 46-yard punt, though they did get nine back on the return. And they will take over first and 10. And the Falcons now going to go on offense late in this first half. And we'll see how this is played. Offensively, they've got the lead. Not a whole lot of time left. What do you think, Charles? Well, it's tempting to try and add to your lead, but a mistake there... That can change things in a big way. I say go ahead, take the knee, get on out for the half. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Flush to his right, and he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Here's a second and two now from the 33. Back to throw. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. This time they stay on the ground. And they'll indeed stop him on third down. And now what do you want to do with your timeouts? 
Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Now here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we'll head down to... Apologies to Coach. Cut him short. We'll talk to him post-game. we got business to get down to. Third quarter action, ready to go. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth, ready for quarter number three. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. Fields it right around the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. And the Vikings set to go on offense to begin the third quarter. And this offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum yeah you're right about that because you know let's face it in the first half most of their focus was in the passing game and to their credit resulted in a healthy amount of yardage so i would think that at halftime they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes they've got to get the running game going and there should be some gaps to run through now and he'll get this just across the 25 yard line I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. To throw, Cousins. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Play fake. Cousins. Oh, this is going to be caught along the sidelines. Probably shouldn't have been caught. He's going to lose yardage there call it a gain of a yard and it'll be fourth down i think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline now that's third down 101 you got to go to the marker know where it is the vikings send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away Take it in at the 22. 43 yards on the punt. Seven-yard return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. now. This game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready. Just shy of the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. 
Dumps this one off to Algier. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Second and four. And this one complete to Smith. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets them a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. They'll look to throw now on first down. That's out wide here for Robinson. Just a gain of a couple there, and it'll be second down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. They'll look to throw again. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over in that time, and it's going to lead to third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Flushed out right, and he wisely will throw that one away. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. the play fake Cousins throws right side and that's complete and they work this out past the 25 a well executed 22 yard gain and they were backed up to start the drive but not anymore now that's the play call that the offensive coordinator had in his head you saw the end result he wanted to go ahead and push the ball downfield and that's what they did and they wound up with good yardage there to get things rolling Here's Madison running on first down. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Draw play, Madison. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. It'll be a gain of 11, and they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half.
Third and short yardage, Cousins. Throw caught there by Osborne. And he will have a Vikings first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now a give to Madison. And he maneuvers up the middle for three. And it's second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. Open man is Osborne. He's got it. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up third and two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. First and ten, Cousins. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. To throw once more on second and ten. Cousins got a man over the middle and it's complete. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. So first and 10 now from the 30. Cousins now. He'll get this underneath to Madison. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays... They run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. To throw again on second down, Cousins. This goes out wide from Madison, and he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it could turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. On third down, they run with Madison. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. Three quarters have come and gone. Back now here on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. 
It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. This will be caught at about the six. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Oh, how about this on first and goal? And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. K.J. Osborne, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it. And this is indeed up to a three-point lead. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And the pressure is on now. They're being shut out here in the second half after a decent first half offensively. And they need their best drive of the game right here. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready at their own 24. Now back to throw. He's got Smith here. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Handing it off, right side, Algier. And some room to maneuver. It's a pretty strong running there as he'll take this across the 50 and down to the 44. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll look to throw here. Now, a quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll set up a throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. 
And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And incomplete on the deep ball. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. And his kick is good. Oh, he just did tuck it into the bottom of that left corner. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Mm -hmm. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason. All square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And we essentially have a brand new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 23. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Open man, he's got Jefferson across the formation. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Now they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Throwing, Cousins. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. So the completion good for just three, and it's second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. On second down, this is Madison. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. Sliding out of the pocket. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. We see this happen so often. If you're a defender, it's like watching a bad movie over and over. The pressure's good, forcing the quarterback out of the pocket. But it's a lot to ask for these defenders to stay plastered to receivers long enough. And sure enough, they let a man come open, and the connection leads to a big play. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. From the gun, here's Cousins. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. On the handoff, it's Madison. 
And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. 45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. He will push his way down to about the 14. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. Now, what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead, so how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about if you're confident in your kicker. And if you've got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down. In an ideal scenario, your kicker puts it through the post as the clock hits zeros. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Joseph's got it, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? Joseph now to kick this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. So now Ritter and the Falcons down 16-13, 2.08 on the clock. They'll have one play, maybe two, before the two-minute warning as they've got a first down. They'll come out throwing here on first down. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. Second and three. Sets up the screen to Robinson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Ten yards there and a first down for the Falcons. This is where you learn a lot about rookie quarterbacks. How can they run that two-minute drill? We're about to find out. Yeah, and for them, it's not just proving it to guys like you and me watching the game and trying to beat a defense. It's proving it to their teammates that they can have the confidence in them when they line up in these situations. He'll look to throw. Pass complete to Robinson. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11. First down. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep him from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave him, and it was successful. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. Clock's under a minute. Still plenty of time, partner. They have all three timeouts. That means they have plenty of options in their play calling and where they target on the field. They can throw it downfield, maybe even in the middle, and use their timeouts. Back to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. And what a big play because now... You're guaranteed at least a shot at extending this one. He had the 40-yard line picked out as his bare minimum to give them some kind of a game-tying attempt, and he got there. Excellent determination on that scramble, and it might just help him snatch away a victory.
Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll look to throw. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And he gets us down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. I just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who? What, what defense you're in? That was totally a blown coverage. Eluding the pressure right. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 21. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Now a carry for Algier headed right. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to potentially send us to overtime. And this one is right through. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Ken Adewagu now out of his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Tie game, and barring something incredible here, we're likely headed to overtime. What I would do is either hand it off inside or more likely I take a knee and let the clock run out because if I'm back there trying to throw and a sack happens, the ball comes free, I can lose the game here. If I get to overtime, I can still win it. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So possession and overtime first goes to the Atlanta Falcons, and we are back underway. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Falcons offense set to go. All set up for him right now, Charles. Opening possession of overtime, they've got the football. They also obviously have this home crowd behind him in a big way. They give that extra energy from them, but they've got to be careful not to let that adrenaline get away from them and play too fast or create errors of their own making. Use that energy, embrace it, 
but make sure they channel it the right way. They've got a chance to go downfield, score a touchdown, and end this game. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Wide open receiver complete. And he's tackled at the 38, but they doubled their yardage. The play started at the 19, and they gained 19. So they come out throwing in the extra session and get a nice hookup right away. Tells you a lot about what a coach feels about his team, doesn't it? That type of a play in overtime. So many people in this situation play not to lose instead of playing to win. That throw there tells you exactly what they're trying to get done. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. He'll look to throw. This one into the hands of Pitts. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. The 22 more yards there and another first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. On the give, it's Algier. Down to about the 37. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll drop to throw. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for not. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a the toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. That's Cordero Patterson hauling it in. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This is a big spot for a rookie QB, and overtime's kind of where you earn your stripes, isn't it? It really is, and we've talked with enough coaches and players about how these youngsters are getting into the game and playing this at such a high level so early. But overtime, that's an entirely different animal, and he's handling it well. Yeah, starting to put together a nice drive. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Complete. Smith has it. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Algier now up the middle, and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling, because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the... And this will be caught! Touchdown! They needed overtime to get it done, but put this one in the win column. So the game-winning touchdown came through the air in overtime. Four quarters wasn't enough. We were treated to a really good one, weren't we, Parker? That we were, and I just love being able to be witness to a game like this all the way through. Who's going to win it? Oh, what? We're getting overtime? Great for us. A lot of tension on the field. Very tough. Not a surprise it ended with a passing touchdown. That's the way we play in the NFL. But the execution was pretty darn good. And now hold everything. This one perhaps not over yet. The officials will take a look at this just Previous to be certain. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. 
How about the hands? How's the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, the ruling on the field. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Ku now for the point after. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it was finished off by a touchdown catch from Drake London. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Nwangu now from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Going to run with Madison again, and that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty, but when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. What can Cousins do in the OT? He'll fire it deep for Rager. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Now Cousins on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Falcons will take control of the football in great field position. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs you know i've seen you know you and i both been to practices where we've seen hey third down situation big third down alert lock in here fourth down play make sure you focus just a little bit extra it didn't pay off in that situation so